Well, hello everyone. Thanks for joining me today at Wynette's Crafting Corner. I don't know how many people in the United States know about these little tea cakes, but they are just fantastic. I know you can get them off of Amazon, but the main place where I get mine is World Market. And I have turned my grandchildren onto these. And so every time I go to World Market, I have to buy them some. Well, I don't have to, but I choose to because they love them and so do I. So we're gonna make a journal cover out of this. So I'm just gonna tear it open first. Just kind of bringing up every side. Let's see here. Well, let's pull these out. They're fantastic. They're marshmallow and chocolate. They're almost like a s'more. And then there's a cookie on the bottom. Okay, so I've torn the box down completely, and then now I'm gonna cut along these edges here, because we don't need those. So there is a tab here on the front, but there's also one on the back and you want to keep that. You don't want to cut it because you want your box to be like this. So this is going to be the spine of the journal. This is the front cover and I will attach a magnet here to close it. So what I'm going to do is just cover this in probably some kind of book page or collage and I will start pulling that together and we'll continue on from there.
Okay, so I got the outside of the box all decoupage with just old book page. And a lot of this was very, uh, was authentic. 1852, 1878. Um, it, it was just fun. Some of it's written in German, some in English. And so now I started to do this side, but I have to think about what I'm gonna use as a closure. And I think what I want to do is just a magnet. So my sister, Sherry, told me about this idea. You don't actually need two magnets. You can use one magnet and a piece of metal. So I'm going to first put one of the pieces of paper oh wait i want to put this here yeah so let's glue this here and i'm just going to use just a little bit of my art glitter glue and then i'm going to put a piece of uh, tape over it or actually the paper can be over it so I will just put this piece of paper over the top of it to conceal that metal piece. And I'm gonna also uh, put some of my decoupage in medium over it. So we're just gonna lay that like that. And I'll finish the you know, other side also. But then we're going to pull this over and then my magnet needs to be here. So what I'll do is I will just make sure that it's in the correct area. I will put just a little piece of double-sided tape there or actually what I'll do is just put like a little glue dot there. And then that will hold it in place while I put the other paper over it. These are just little micro glue dots. Let me grab one. And what we'll do is we'll just stick that on there. I might put two because I think these are kind of old. I've had them sitting here for a while. Since I haven't made cards in a while, I don't use them very often anymore. And so then that is just going to go there. And if we press it in the right spot, <laughs> which I didn't do. <laughs> yeah, press it right there in the right spot. It will be where it needs to be to close. So there we go. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, so then what I'll do is I need to put another little piece of paper across there to hide that and because I think I'm going to just put another glue dot there on top of it so my paper will adhere down over that and then I will use my paintbrush and again my Elmer's glue medium and put that down over that. So I'm going to go around it both sides and then just lay that over the top and then decoupage over that. and then I'll let that dry. And then I will do the underside. 
So. Okay, I finished decoupaging the inside cover. Isn't it cool? This was an old from an old ledger, I think again from the 1800s. There's my magnet and I'm just letting that dry on that silicone mat. And I'm gonna take my Elmer's glue again uh, with the coffee mixture and I'm going to just add it to the inside. This helps kind of protect the paper and and glues it down and uh, oh, this is such a fun project. Now many of you, I've told you that I am going to have the privilege of going to Gail Augustinelli's uh, crafting retreat in July in Montana. And so I'm trying to get all kinds of little projects ready so that I can just take them and kind of finish them up there. And this is going to be one of the ones I take, this little mini journal. I think I'm going to have it be just a very grungy and old journal. Um, so that's going to be so much fun. I tell you, I don't know about you guys, but crafting has saved my life basically um one of these days i might tell you the story of why it's really saved my life but i've never had well i take that back besides my nursing career i've never had something that i was as passionate about learning about. And uh, I watch, watch a lot of other YouTubers to learn techniques and just to stay in touch with the community. The journaling community is just such a, a, a welcoming and uh, accepting community. I just love it. And, you know, you've heard me talk about me buying my new house and where I'm going to be able to have a proper craft room that's going to be very organized and, you know, oh, it's going to be fun. But anyway, okay, now that's the inside of the journal. And I'm going to have to think about what I'm going to have in that uh, little window. Oh, it's going to be a, have to be an image of a person, I think. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm going to let this dry and then I'll be back with you guys in just a second. So the main construction of my journal cover is done and dried. And so I told you I wanted to find a image to put on the inside. And if I slide this in... I think that looks very pretty. So that's going to be my image. She's got a crown. I'd like to know who she is. She must be some kind of a princess or a queen. So that's going to go there. But I want a little bit of decoration or decorative element on the side. And I have these uh, Stamperia decorative chips. They're very, very lightweight. And so I pulled a couple of them apart and I thought I would put this one here and this one here. And then I pulled off a couple of other ones and I thought I would um, have them available for the inside. So I'm going to paint them with some acrylic gesso and then decide what colors I want to bring in. Probably a little bit of a pink shade because she's got a pink shade here in her hair. So I'm going to go ahead and just sew these. The other thing I think, the other thing I think I'm going to do uh, also is I want to put a little lace down the spine here. Do you see where it's kind of cracked a couple of places? And if I put some lace there, that will help protect it. So I'm going to look for some lace and adhere that down. 
So I went ahead and pulled all of my papers. It's a three signature journal. I kept everything monotone, either cream colored, black. There is just a tiny little bit of green here and there. Uh, there is this one floral image there, but everything is, is pretty neutral. And then I went ahead and put the image of my woman on the inside. I backed her first with some book page and then glued her in. So then now I want to color the embellishment that's going to go around the, the journal itself. I'm going to use Tattered Rose Distress Oxide Spray and just put a little bit on it and then maybe some brown splatters or green splatters. I don't know how this is going to work. It's going to be interesting. It might be kind of nice if there's still just a little bit of that uh, white coming through on it. So I'm going to set this aside and let it dry. So now I've dried these and I want to add just a touch of green. But I'm going to do it with a small little paintbrush. And I'm picking between Bundled Sage and Rustic Wilderness. I'm not sh quite sure which one I'm going to use. And this one's brand new. I haven't even opened it. And I only want a little bit, so I'm just going to put a couple of drops there. And I might just mix in a little bit of this darker green, too. It may be a little bit too dark. And I want it just ever so slightly on the tips of these uh, leaves. Just a couple of spots. Okay, so now I've done a little bit of the leaves and now to bring in a little bit of the brown tones of the journal, I am gonna spray ever so slightly gathered twig, twigs over this. And I'm just gonna do that, just to bring in a little bit of brown. We'll see what this looks like when it dries. If it did bring in a little bit of brown, I think it did. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's going to be good. So I'm going to let that dry and then I will adhere them to the journal. So as I was trying to figure out 
what to lay down here on these corners, I realized this is just a little bit too dark, I think. It it takes away from her picture. So I thought I would just put a little bit of lace down over this. And I think that would help it. I'm just going to put down just a tiny little bit of Fabri-Tac. Let's see which side. You know what? I figure if you can't tell which side, then they're both pretty much the same. Oh... Uh, well, this is coming along quite nicely, and you know, m most of the time, it really takes me quite some time to do a journal, you know, days and days and days. And this one, I pretty much did in a day and a half. So, I don't know, am I getting faster, or did I just not complicate this one? The other thing is... Um, I haven't decorated the inside. I hope I'm getting Fabri-Tac here. My dad used to always say, it's hell to get old, but the alternative is worse. <laughs> he had so many quotes, he was fantastic. All right, let's just lay this down here. And uh, that will help soften that up a little bit. And then I will reevaluate what more I want to do. Maybe a little bit down here or along this side before putting that... Uh, this down. I think that is pretty nice. I like that. So I'm going to put some down this side also. Well, you guys, I have been having quite the problem with this little closure. So remember I had first put a um, magnet and it wouldn't hold it. So then I took the magnets out and I recovered the both of these ends. And then now I've punched holes and put eyelets in. And that still doesn't seem to work. It keeps getting in the way. So I'm considering taking this flap off. And then this will come around. And I'll put an eyelet in the back here. And hopefully it will close then. I don't know. I tell you, this is driving me crazy. It just is not working out like I want it to. I mean, like it, the, the, either the twine I'm using, it, it, it ends up closing like this instead of closing correctly. Maybe I need to put two magnets and tie a bow here. I, I don't know. So, I'm going to vacillate on it a little bit and see what I need to do to fix this. Oh, I like a good challenge. Well, I finally figured it out, but it was not easy. So, unfortunately, the bow is a little bit toward the back, but that gives it room to grow. I did end up 
cutting off this flap here. And then what I did is instead of putting an eyelet here, I stitched it down. And the same thing over here, even though I did run it through the eyelet, I still stitched it down. Now, I wish it came up and the bow was closer in the middle, but you know, it is what it is. What are you gonna do? But <laughs> it is a cute little journal. I cannot wait to start doing the inside and decorating it. And it's, it's okay, it's cute. So thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. Uh, make one like this. If you go to World Market, get your tunic uh, tea cakes and just figure out something better than I did for that back piece there. But we've got room to grow. we got room to grow. So again, thanks for joining me. And I will see you guys next Monday. Bye.